As crazy as this sounds, this is actually the best custom teardrop camper and it's affordable. So I know that sounds like an oxymoron to you guys. I've shown you a lot of trailers on the channel, but this one, if you're watching this, this really is the best for you. So I'm gonna hand the reins over to Mark here, but I'll be back with you in a moment. Hey campers, Mark here from Overland Trailer and welcome to North Idaho. I'm going to tell you guys why you should build your very own DIY teardrop camper. And we're gonna do that by looking at my favorite one that I've ever helped build, which is this one right here. But first, thank you, Drew, for letting me share with everybody and for helping me find a campsite because you see I'm a few minutes from my house right now, but I can also go camping here and here and here in this last spot I found because of Drew's tips on using Google Earth to find a campsite. Now I know you're thinking I should go camping in North Idaho and you totally should. However, there's 150,000 of you on this channel and we don't all need to storm the woods at once. So I'll just let you know that we have rabid squirrels and thousands of wolves. And if that doesn't scare you away, the Kardashians bought a house here. And if that doesn't scare you away, you've seen a lot of stuff in your life and you just need to come to Idaho and spend some time in the woods. So there's really three reasons I tell people they should build their own teardrop. The first one is to save money. The second one is to have full control over the quality of your build. And the third one is your ability to customize your build to fit your exact camping needs. Before I tell you about all of that, let's take a quick tour of this DIY build. It's a 2013 teardrop trailer that is five foot by nine feet long. It has professionally done cabinetry and a lot of extras. For instance, being able to pull the stove out lengthwise instead of widthwise in the galley area gave a lot more storage area underneath the galley counter. And then inside the cabin area, there's a large storage area for all of your clothing and two shelves to hold all of your things. The skin is not aluminum, it's stainless steel, which means it's always gonna look like this. Plus it's more durable than aluminum and so this thing was made to last. The other thing that I like about it is the paint. This paint is the exact same paint as the tow vehicle has. Now there's two reasons that this is my favorite DIY build. And the first one is that this is the first trailer we helped build that was a DIY build. And the second reason is it's my parents' trailer and they worked together on it and they did an amazing job. They were the first in a list of what is now thousands of DIY teardrop builders that we've managed to help on six continents. So if you live in Antarctica and wanna build one, give me a call. I'd love to make that all seven. So why should you build your own DIY teardrop trailer? Well, the biggest reason is just gonna save you a bunch of money. Having manufactured trailers for years, I can tell you the majority of the cost of a teardrop trailer is in the labor to build it and the business overhead, whether it's paying for the facility, the insurance, and all the other stuff that it takes to run a business. So if you're willing to put in a little bit of work, learn some skills, rope in some friends and family to help you build it, and maybe buy some tools, you can easily build a trailer like this one and have an amazing trailer for the fraction of the cost of one from a manufacturer. I'm the first to admit that I built my first teardrop trailer because I wanted to save money. In 2007, when I built mine, I also decided to blog about it. And that blog eventually was picked up by larger and larger news agencies and magazines. And eventually I ended up making a documentary film about teardrop trailers. Amazon published it, and that became the beginning of Overland Trailer, the teardrop trailer manufacturing business. But in 2019, we decided to change things up, and in early 2020, dedicated the entire business not to manufacturing, but to helping DIY teardrop builders build their own, because that's where it started. That's where my heart is, and those are my people. Most of the DIY teardrop builders I come in contact with are doing it for the exact same reason I did originally. But there are two very other good reasons to build your own. I want you to know that Mark did not reach out to me to make this video. This was all a gut reaction to these crazy increases in the small camper industry. At some point, I'm going to need to help you to find other ways to get into this lifestyle. And DIY, this is where it started, and I think it's time to come back to it. If there was one thing I wanna be known for on this channel is that we played some small part in what I'm gonna call the DIY renaissance, the DIY revival. I think it's time to return to the roots of where these teardrop trailers started. And so I look back at kind of my journey and I think of when I ripped the skin off of a vintage trailer for the first time or working on a home-built teardrop, I didn't feel like I had the knowledge or the skills to tackle something like this. And that's what I want to show you in future episodes here of Playing With Sticks. I want to introduce you to DIY kits, 
These are kits you can put together during a long weekend, and the cost is much lower than something coming together out of the factory. The other thing I want to introduce you to is DIY Builder Assist, which means you'll have someone walking you through your own home build. This doesn't have to be scary and it doesn't have to be expensive. Now I'm going to keep doing those gear review videos and the tips and trick videos to just help you have a more simple and gratifying camping experience. But if you don't wanna miss those videos or these DIY videos, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of this future content. Now let's talk about quality control for a second. When you build your own trailer, you have complete control over all the materials, the parts, and the construction methods that go to make a trailer like this. That's why you can find amazing trailers like this one built by home craftsmen in their own garages. A great example of somebody who's applied their DIY skills to the max is the story of Larry Shank and his family. Right after World War II, his dad bought this Kinskill teardrop trailer and then basically tore it down and rebuilt it in his own way. And as you can see, it's heavily DIY modded as a monster. And then he passed it on to his son, Larry, who still camps in it in 2022. And I see this as the DIY teardrop builder's goal, which is to build a trailer that's not like the RV industry, which builds mostly disposable campers, but to build something that can last for entire generations. In 2019, there was an internal document leaked from a major RV manufacturer in the US, and it showed that their RVs were being made to last for 44 uses, essentially two or three years, before they started to break down and fall apart. Now, to be fair, a lot of teardrop companies are high quality manufacturers, a lot of which you've seen on this channel, but there are some out there, like this one very large company, well-known teardrops, that have low quality standards, or they import trailers and have little control over the quality standards. That is not an heirloom. If you build it yourself, you can build something that will last you the rest of your life, and who knows, maybe someday your kids will get to fight over it because they love you so much. Now, another side benefit to building your own teardrop is that I'm a lot more self-sufficient because if something breaks or gets damaged, I know how to fix it. I don't need to call some faceless corporation and ask if their warranty applies. I just go buy the parts and do it myself, and it's just so much simpler. Another reason I love the DIY trailer is because I can customize it to fit my camping needs, which is this. I'm not in a campground, I'm out in the wilderness. And so I can build an off-road trailer or I can build an on-road trailer, but either way I can customize it to fit exactly the way I plan to camp. This was my first teardrop trailer build and I made it so that the kitchen had a double slide out for more counter space and bunk beds for kids. You could make a smaller off-road version so that sometimes people also just like the classic look of a teardrop trailer and can replicate that. They can be customized on the inside and the outside. This one's extra wide with custom graphics. You can match your tow vehicle. Perhaps my favorite is the very utilitarian teardrop that you just see going down the highway. That level of customization you're never gonna get out of a commercially produced teardrop trailer. Now I'll tell you the number one thing that it takes to build your own teardrop trailer. It's just a willingness to learn. A great example of being willing to learn is the story of Deborah Kellerman, who took a sabbatical from work and decided to restore three vintage teardrop trailers. She dug into the trailer thinking it just needed a little brushing up and found that it basically needed to be redone. And in her own words, Truly, Mark, I didn't know what a screwdriver was. A eight months ago, I think we had one Phillips screwdriver and two slotted screwdrivers and a couple hammers. And uh, I had no idea what tools could do and how they could be used. And I realized that really it's not a mystery and that you can learn how to do these things. Her willingness to learn is why her trailers turned out absolutely amazing. One more thing that really helped Deborah and helps a lot of DIYers is to have a network of people, people who are experts at welding or woodworking or uh, design. And I had a good teacher, uh, my neighbor who was uh, letting me use his tools and agreed to give me some distant direction. And his lesson to me was nothing is, you know, absolutely irreversible. And if you make a mistake, uh, well, you'll figure out what you did wrong and you'll do it, you'll redo it, do it again. Now, just kind of as a side note, I used to be a teacher and so I'm always thinking this way. If you're gonna build a teardrop trailer, get a kid involved. They're gonna learn all the same things you are and they're gonna learn it at a much younger age. And especially with shop programs kind of going away, this is a great way to learn tools, how electricity works, budgeting, all sorts of things. It's a really great skill to have. There's so many resources available on the web, yours included, that um, anybody really can do that now. And so for me to be able to 
have that kind of an outcome is just a thrill. And I would say if I can do it, anybody can do it, you know? So I actually filmed this video twice and the first time I got lost in the woods. This time I show up to put everything away and, and I'm locked out. I do have the trailer keys, so I guess I'm staying there tonight. At least it's a comfortable bedroom and uh, the world is my living room. I just had this really great idea for new Kardashian show where they try to outrun rabid squirrels and wolves in North Idaho. And then we just rename the show from Keeping Up with the Kardashians to Outrun the Slowest Kardashian. Hey Carl, I want 50% of that. So if you guys want to see more of Mark in the future, let me know in the comments. But I'll also post in the description how you can find his website, how you can find his YouTube videos. But I think he has a lot to offer this community and I hope we can kind of beg him or maybe uh, coerce him to come back on here and share a little more with us. If you want to see more DIY focused videos, I have a growing YouTube channel with tips on it. And you can go to overlandtrailer.com where we help only DIY teardrop builders. I hope that I have helped you see outside the box of the RV industry just a little bit. And Drew, we seriously have to go camping together sometime. So the video I think you're going to be most interested in is our off-road teardrop versus traditional, more classic teardrop. So check out this video. This is going to help you determine the pros and cons between these two styles of teardrops and the one that best fits your lifestyle.